What's going on, guys? I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second just so I can get this page back over here where I can see it. There we go. I was missing my box over here where I can see if you guys are saying anything. And participants. Hey, can everybody hear me okay? There we go, chat box. Check, uh, let me share, pause recording, hold on a second. I think we are, no, we're recording. Let me share my desktop over here. This, uh, if you guys are on here right now, let me, of course, it's not going to let me do it unless I shrink this, make this bigger. This is a nice five minute roller coaster move, guys, on, that it just popped like right before uh, this started. If you look on here, ES short at 1730, which I don't know, what was that? Two hours ago, hour and a half ago, it said 29.67 short on, that was right here at this line right here, 17.25. If you, t I always say I don't take it until it usually pops out, comes back in, and I take the second time out, which if you did take it at the second time out, it's 29.66.75. I didn't see it until right uh right here i was on this move right here so i pulled back up and then back down again this thing's 150 head now this is on the paper trading for all disclosures everything we do online we have to use paper trading for training purposes yes trevor i do All right, guys, I'm going to give it like two more minutes. Uh, that's on here. I'm going to take this to a, make it a winning trade. If it pulls back, it pulls back. Being a five minute chart, you can get 10 ticks on this thing. I think we're going back down to right here. We've tested it one, two, I don't know how many times, the top of the fifth wave box or fourth wave pullback. All right, guys, we're going to get rock and rolling. I was going to, I think we are good of where we're at. So earlier, how many of you guys um, saw my tweet earlier today that I said, do I would not take this fifth wave move? Everybody awake? Good, Greg. All right, I'm going to go through it and show you why I would not have taken this trade. I did it in the video, but I, it's kind of cool to see where I put it, and then I said don't take it, and then lo and behold, it, uh, it didn't work out. So, like, that's the first time that I'm happy that something didn't work out. So I can show you guys because – a lot of times everybody will post a, a winning trade, uh, but they won't show you any losers of why, and this will come in handy. Uh, all right, so earlier today, I'm going to hide Roller Coaster, and then I'm going to hide Elliott Wave, and I'm going to hide that. So I'm going to leave this channel on here because it's where I drew it at 12.30. Uh, is that better, Trevor, like that? should be able to see it a lot bigger than uh, like this. Uh, I want to go back. I isolated off of, let me see here. Let me turn this on. 
9830, which should have been, I think, this one right here. Yeah. This low right here is where I isolated this off of. Okay. Do you can see this? We were right in this area right here earlier today. So I isolated off this low that was yesterday's open. I could have done here uh, as well. Uh, it would have been fine at one o'clock in the morning, but I like this one. So 98.30 on our Elliott wave, you just hit the sprocket on the start bar, put in your 98.30, which was that candle right there, and it's listed right here on the left. Click OK. It's not going to redraw anything different because this is the way it was earlier. All right, so my post was at 29, I think 63, I think. So let's blow this up some. And the wave four, see, was at 1230-ish, somewhere right in this area right here is where we were at. Right here on the center channel line, we pulled back in here. The wave four was actually right here, where this, uh, not down here, it was right here. When I snapped this channel, what we do on TradingView, and I'm, I'm gonna, actually, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to delete this and then I can bring it back if I mess it up. We're gonna draw another channel. You go over here to the left where it says trend line, go down to regression trend, click the bottom. I have it saved in here uh, as wave forward pullback channel. You can watch, go to my JDub Tick Trader profile on TradingView and you can watch the video on how to save that as a default so you don't have to keep changing it every time. But you just click the top of the wave three now, right now, you would click the bottom of the wave four, and we're going to do that. But earlier today, we were 11.45. We were right here at 12.20. So I dropped that channel, and I said I wouldn't take it unless it got out of this channel line. And this was the opening range right here. I would want to be above that to get out of there. But... And look at our uh, roller coaster trade. It's 250 ahead right now. Let me turn it on real quick just so you can see it. That's a that was a no-brainer move. All I did was turn the computer on a little bit ago, getting ready for this, and so I saw the move and I was like, man, that looks like a roller coaster move. Turned it on, and sure enough, I took it and I took it late. I took it at 29.65 instead of 66, so I lost about six ticks on that. Uh, now, I think it's going to stop right here on this green line and reverse because it has in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stop loss right here. And I'm going to take, it's going to stop me out. And I don't care if it, it's probably going to bounce back and stop me out. $250 winner and I got in it right here here I believe so one two no 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 it was right before class started so 5 10 15 about right in this area right here about 20 minutes ago it's right in this area so I took it this is a $250 winner not even thinking about it no I don't wait for a retracement on that that this is why I will not trust this one right here one, uh, and I'm not gonna trust this fifth wave move anymore because we went to range bound like this when this is just my own personal rules when it goes like this i don't take it because we spent all day not getting where we needed to go so for my own personal rules this fifth wave is out of the i, I won't take it i don't trust it anymore it's gone up and down it would have whipsawed you out if you were trying to guess uh, that's on there now this roller coaster move could keep going farther down but i got one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I got fifteen plus candles from eight forty in the morning to now. I mean, basically t almost twelve hours. Was it seven? Um, eleven hours of sideways action, and it stopped pretty much in this area fifteen times. You know what I mean? And I'm not gonna. 
I got a chance at it. I hope this thing reverses and goes back just so you can see it going. But let me turn roller coaster off and go back to our Elliott wave. So we isolated off that candle bar back there, gave us here. We dropped the channel from the three to the four. And I said, I wouldn't go long till you get out of here. Now that, all right, that's just number one. We dropped it. Now we need to go down here and draw, which I already have it on there, but I'm gonna draw it again to make it a little bit bigger. We need to do a Fibonacci and I have it saved underneath here. Oops, clicked the wrong one. Do a Fib retracement. I saved it as a W5T9140. We're gonna take that, we're gonna go to zero because there's the wave four. Now I did it off of this one right here at 1220. So the wave three is right here. So we were right here, 1220. So I wouldn't have had any more red or green bars to the right of where my cursor's at. So we're gonna take it there and we're gonna drag it up here to the high of wave three. And if you notice, we crowned out of there, that we went out of it. That's violated. So the one I posted last week was the same way. And I said, I wouldn't have taken this trade because it crowned out. I have found in my own personal uh, experience, when that crown gets violated, it usually turns into a whipsaw day like that. Uh, so I wouldn't have taken this, I, like earlier I said, I wouldn't even have touched this trade because of that crown, even though other things lined up. Now, the only thing that really concerned me was on this wave four pullback, if you notice, we had green dots for long, the longer, higher time frame um, uh, moves were all, the bias was green for long. We've got some indecision ones here in the yellow, but we never saw one red, none, look at it. We're just now getting red on this one. Uh, and that's the first red dot we've seen since 2.55 in the morning. We had not have one red dot on this five minute time frame till right there. Uh, so I wouldn't have taken that. Uh, now we're just grading this trade right now. Bias does not give me, uh, it didn't have, it didn't get some red in there. I like to see some red on the way forward pullback. I didn't see any red. So that's a red, that is a red flag to me. No. Uh, second one and my deal killer, the 535 oscillator, it crowned out of the 140. I don't want it. So there's two reasons for me not to take it. Now stochastics, uh, False breakout did stop right here for the drop down, which was good. We crossed over down here on the stochastics going up, which would have been your 1220 was right here. You did get the okay to go up, but it never crossed over. If you look at it, humped over and came back down again. And your 6-4 moving average, this blue line and the red line, part of Elliott wave, we just barely went over and came back down. Came back up, back down. Now we did break out here, but I'll show you on bits that there was, there were a couple of trades in here you could have took with bits, but for Elliott wave wise, I have no, no, no. And I wanted to be outside of that 15 minute opening range of the ES, which we just barely went above it and back down, barely above it. Now this one did take off. That was a good move there. Um, but we went range bound. So all of those rules of grading this trade that you went through, this was not a good trade and it didn't pan out. Now I'll show you on bits that there was some moves on here. So let's go to roller coaster and turn those on for roller coaster. Let's shut off Elliott wave. Roller coaster had a nice breakout there at the 8:30 open. It did your range, came back, tested the bottom of that range, and then took off like a freaking rocket. That that was your trade of the day if you were trading the 830 open. Um, back in there, when it tested the bottom of that opening range on the second candle, 29.52, wrote it up somewhere in the 29.75, that's 23, that's almost 100 ticks. Uh, what is that? 
two hours, two and a half hours. Not a bad little move. Then you had your way for pullback. There was a move in there uh, on roller coaster. You could have picked some stuff up there. Back over again, another move there that took off on the second candle. Um, you definitely want to put your stop. Once a roller coaster move takes off, guys, I put my stop loss at like one tick profit minimum. And depending on if the market's flying up and just trending up, you know what I mean? Uh, I may leave it there for a while, but if it's range bound like this, uh, I may move it a couple, three, four ticks up. You know what I mean? Just to, if it does take off and keep going, great. But if it doesn't, at least you made a little bit of money on it. Uh, then on this uh, opening here, we had our Globex open. This is the uh, 15 minute candle here, 15 minute range. And that's another reason before I even turned on roller coaster, that's why I looked at this. I said, man, we're busting over here. We're coming out. I bet you that's a roller coaster move. Turned on roller coaster and there it was uh, to go down. Now let's turn the late wave back on just for a second. Look how we came down. Now we may keep on going longer and go down, so be it. But on this trade, we just did 250 bucks in 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, not a bad little trade. No, uh, Trevor, I draw them on a uh, higher time frame. Let me show you, let's go to a 15 minute. If I zoom out here on 15 minutes, this is a one hour chart or a one hour channel, let me phrase it, that red line, the red lines are. Uh, one of the reasons I think we'll probably keep going lower, and I said this in the post I did earlier today, I said, I think we're going to follow this five minute channel down to the bottom right here, uh, 29.42. Well, if you look, we're pretty, pretty darn close I probably should have stayed in that roller coaster move. Now it's getting ready to take off and go lower, but I'm not going to chase it either. Now on a 15 minute, here is a roller coaster move on a 15 minute chart. I don't like the higher time frame uh, roller coaster moves. They, it, a lot can happen in 15 minutes for each one of these candles. That's a lot of time. When you're on a five minute, if you're wrong, you know you're wrong, you know what I mean, and two candles. Uh, 15 minutes, you don't know you're wrong for an hour and a half, two hours um, out of there. And you go back and just look at roller coaster. Let me go back over here. You go back to, is roller coaster going in the groove? Yes, 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 yes. Now, this one did pull back on it but it still took off and did 64.50. What do we got down there? 43, oh yeah, we're on a five minute. 29.47 and it went down to 44, 16 ticks. Uh, but like I said, if you moved your stop loss to one or two ticks, that was a no cost trade. Same way with this one. That, uh, and I told you that I don't, Take it until it comes out past the first time, which it did right here. Still would have pulled up four or five ticks. This one still did good, really good move there. Freaking awesome move there. This five minute, yeah, look at it. This five minute time frame is doing really good. Go to a four minute. Good, 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 good. Just say one loser. Good, good. One break even one. Damn good one. Break even, break even, good, good. I mean, badass, badass, break even. I'll just say that one was a loser. That was a really good one. Uh, four minute time frame is doing pretty good. Three minute, one, two, one, two, three, break even. Three minutes, not bad. That uh, three minutes is doing pretty good. Let's go to two. Now, what I do on these when you go backwards. Now I'm gonna do it on five minutes uh, just because it's easier to get the channel on here. I do the, all right, this is a 60 minute, one hour, longer time frame channel that you're looking at time frame. So when someone says, you're only supposed to be trading the higher time frames. Yes, you are. You are trading the higher time frame. You're just using roller coaster 
to find opportunities inside of that hour. It's uh, some of the, like for instance, this one right here. When was this? This was the 18th. You had a super nice move at 1.30, is that in the morning? No, that's 1.30 in the morning. Uh, came off the channel there, and then this one here at 6.30 in the morning, it took off like a rocket at 6.35. That's a good entry because you're right on that. You would know this if you didn't draw that channel on a one hour time frame. So let me show you, and it, we went from one side of the channel to the other, okay? Now I'm the same way, when it gets up to the here, I'm gonna move my stop loss right up to the channel line. I don't care if it retraces and stops me out and goes even higher like this. I don't care because for the most part, it has obeyed and stayed inside this channel, which it came back in it. And we're back in it again. More than likely, it should bounce off the bottom down here and then go on up. Should, I mean, that's, we don't know, we're just guessing, but I'm gonna do the higher probability trades that are on there. And guys, I don't know where to put this. I've tried, I talked to uh, TradingView last week. We're working on .d charts. Let me look on here, share bars, um, and ability to lock in, uh, in indicators. So say for instance, we did a price range. Right now you have to go in, right click and lock it. Um, we're working on making that where the lock, you can set it as a default for it. Um, we're also working on, I don't know if we'll get all this. This is our wish list that we went in with. Um, if you have, say, multiple workspaces, but you want, you know what I mean? You're drawing support and resistant lines on one. Right now, if you open up another workspace, those lines are not going to show up. Um, so we're working on that of having basically like a global uh, link button for that, so no matter what uh, workspace you're on, it'll show up. An alert on a trend line right now, the workaround on this, and you can thank Joel Hansen, shared this with me the other day. Uh, you just use a regular trend line and just snap it after you do your channel on the exact lines and set your alert to it. Um, that's the way to, for right now. And you can snap three lines if you want, top, middle, and bottom and set an alert for either one. And then it will gradually, whenever it touches it, it'll let you know. Um, trailing stop is not available underneath um, this side over here when you're placing it. Um, we're, that was our very big wish list on that one. A um, Couple other little deals. But anyhow, that's how that works on it. No, Trevor, when the bias is yellow, um, let's go back to five minutes. Uh, so you get the picture of, I did a one hour and this is a one hour longer time frame. I've had this channel on here for a little bit. Uh, let's take the opening range off. Okay, even on a one hour, Roller coaster move, it picked it up right here at seven o'clock this morning to take off. 29.53, and like I said, it went up to the center channel line. I'm gonna move my stop loss one tick behind it at the center channel line, because what does it usually do? Reverses and goes back down, and we usually go to the bottom. So, and it's about ready to stop this out right here at 29.56 is where it's gonna stop it out, and then this one's not good anymore. Go to a 30 minute. See how if you switch back and forth between the time frames, you can find a new entry. Like this one was at seven o'clock this morning uh, and it took off at eight. All right, you go down to 30 minutes. It got you in clear. It gave you a signal before midnight and then three o'clock in the morning, it gave you an entry. So that when you, Make sure you hop between time frames when you go down so that you can see what's going on. So let's go back to five minutes. Let me take the roller coaster off. I'm gonna turn on bits. And let's look at some of these moves. All right, we know this is that fourth wave pullback right now. 
Uh, Trevor, the center line, I get chopped up on the center. I like to make trades at the top or the bottom. Um, but that's where roller coaster comes in handy. A one hour channel with roller coaster and then drop down to five minutes, um, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, and see which one of those is uh, in the groove that is popping off those nice long green moves with the trailing stop behind it. When you have a bunch of those, those are really, really, really good. Uh, so let's go back to earlier today when I was telling you at 12, 1220-ish, I was right here and I was saying, don't go long until you're outside that green. Bits gave you an entry right here. And you had, let me show you how you graded this using just bits and not using Elliott Way. You crossed over yellow, or the cyan crossed over the yellow. That was 140. Your oscillator, your 535 oscillator, if you look, it was getting lower and lower and lower. Right when it crossed over, it was barely red, barely red, and went to your first green. All right, you also got your stochastic down the bottom, your green arrow down there crossed over. So there's a positive, go straight, go long. Your red's getting shorter, go long. Your yellow went to green right on that candle, the can two candles before. So there's your third one. And then cyan crossed over. So there's, there's four items to take it. Now, on top of that, let's go. Now, nah, it's not going to let me do it. Uh, that 15 minute range bar was also right around in there too, which would have been your to go long. Now it didn't last, didn't last long, but you I mean you pull out what is that 29.62 and it went to 29.70. That's 32 ticks. It's not a bad little trade. Uh, came back, dipped below, but the cyan didn't cross over. It retested it, took off again. Came back down, retested it, gone again. Now the move tonight for that, let's turn on roller coaster again. Roller coaster gave you your entry. Basically, you came in right here at 755. It's kind of was confirmation if you look at bits, because it came down, tested it again, came back through, and then it pierced it. And once it pierced it, it's just taken off going down like a rocket after that. Let's add on Elliott Wave real quick and see where we're at. Nah, I didn't give up. I didn't give up much getting out right at that green line. We went one tick below it. 29.58.50. I gave up four ticks. That's all I gave up. Now, if this thing takes off and goes to the moon, great. Now, it'll probably go down to that bottom channel line that I was showing you. But you can't... Uh, you got to take what you can get and not turn a losing tr or a winning trade into a losing trade. Let's go backwards and get this channel back. All right, Trevor, this is what I was talking about on that center channel line. I don't like to take center channel uh, trades. Now it really has not, if you look like right here, let me blow this up. You look right here, it was just chop, 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 boom, and then it took off. Now, this was still a good move right here. Using roller coaster, you can find a move to take that I wouldn't normally take because in here, this is just chopping all over the place, taking people in and out of the market. This was a nice entry because it was on, like I love roller coaster when it's on the center channel line because it's a trade I wouldn't normally take. When I get that signal, then I know it's probably going to be a pretty good trade. Came back up, stopped you out, tested that center channel line again. Then you got another alert right after that. And then just a massive move, 28.92, all the way up to 29.38. Uh, massive, massive move. And it just kept on going. I mean, it came back down, tested the top of the channel, and kept on rocketing up. Uh, but that's how I, I get out. If I'm in a trade and it's going like this one right here, if you would have took this one, I wouldn't have taken this uh, roller coaster because it's this close to the center channel line. 
I don't like trading into that. That's almost like a support and resistance zone. Uh, same way with this one. When it took off and came down here, as soon as it touched this center channel line, my stop loss would have been right there on the center channel line. As soon as it came back up and touched it, it would have stopped me out. I'm not going to wait for it to go back up here somewhere and stop me out. And you can just see that you can go down to, I go down to a four minute. And it's like, all right, how has the four minute been performing? And see, there's more, if you actually look at here, there's more smaller opportunities in there. Uh, it's not a bad idea if you opened up a two, three, four, and five minute uh, chart on another window and have that in there where you can see it, um, these roller coaster moves. So you can see it on a two, three, four, whichever one uh, that it's on. Like this one took you clear to the bottom channel, just, just a few ticks away from it, then took back off again. That, Trisha, there's um, range bars and let me see on here. Range bars is like a, I want to say it's like a price range. Uh, I don't quite, I don't use them, so I can't describe, I'm not the person to ask you how to describe them. Uh, I can tell you a share bar is, it's not trace, um, a share bar is measuring how many shares are traded. So if I say it's a 5,000 share bar, each candle is not time-based, it's share-based. So when that candle gets to, 5,000 shares, say, if that's what my number is, then it prints a candle. And then if the next candle is 5,000 shares, it's going to print another one and another one. So you'll see a trend where orders are coming in. and it's, You're basically seeing orders as they come in and uh, bigger orders. So if you're just getting onesie, twosie people in there buying, you're not going to get very many candles. But you get the, if you're getting the big banks and institutions in there starting to move the market, you're going to see share bars going up big time. Uh, you know, some people use 1,000 share bars, 5,000 share bars. I like the 5K uh, share bars. They don't have those on TradingView right now. I used to use them on TradeStation a lot. Awesome, Tricia. What questions do you guys um, have for me that I can answer for you? Uh, hey, Greg, let me show you what you can do here. Let me find, do, 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 compare or add symbol. Here we go. Click this plus sign. If you wanted to, uh, you were asking about the dollar chart. You can click that on here and that's DAX, isn't it? Is that right? The dollar average index or whatever it is. And you can actually... You can click any of those. So say you have an S&P 500 chart, you can put, you can click NASDAQ, Dow uh, on here, and you can add another symbol if you have whatever you want to compare. And if I can get a hold of this, come on. This red line is that DAX, I believe. So you can see how it's reacting lifetime as it's going. On there. And then, like I said, you can go on here and add NASDAQ if you wanted. And it's going to put it on here. So you, you can do Dow, S&P. So you can actually see what the NASDAQ and the Dow is doing at the same time. It's a pretty cool deal. MRK. Let me get uh, Trevor's question, Gary, and then I'll come to you, okay? What is MRK? Stock? Is that what you're asking about? Is that what that is, Trevor? Yeah, Greg, that's, uh, you're welcome, man. Uh, play around with that. Uh, you can add them on there. It's 
kind of neat. Uh, that way you don't have to keep flipping back and forth. Sometimes you see the NASDAQ will take off before the S&P does, and you can kind of get a little heads up without having to look around. Yeah, okay, Merrick, there you go. Let's see. And then let me take, uh, now having that NASDAQ and Dow and them that we just added on all these, the cool thing is compared to like Thinkorswim and the other ones where you have to just completely delete something off, you can just turn them on and off in TradingView. I, I think that's one of the best features that I like. TradingView, this is how I explained it to TradingView the other day. I said TradingView is like Apple designed a trading platform and they make it the least amount of clicks to get the most amount of information out to you that you use on a regular basis. Uh, Thinkorswim is a great platform, it's powerful, it's very taxing on your computer uh, graphics wise. You almost have to have an eight gig video card to truly run it uh, efficiently. I think in my personal opinion, and probably 32 if not 64 gigs of RAM. Um, but TradingView, it, Thinkorswim is like a Samsung phone. TradingView is like an iPhone. That's the easiest way to uh, how I explain it. Yes, TradingView does have a volume profile. You can go up here to uh, FX and just hit volume profile and they have different ones. You can do session HD, you can do fixed range. Session HD is the one I think, yeah. Here we go, let me turn off roller coaster so you can see it in bits. There's your volume profile. Pretty damn accurate, you know what I mean, for your point of control on all those. Uh, and a lot of times you use that point of control for once it busts through, it usually typically goes down um, and then comes back up, retest it, usually goes back down. Uh, and the same way with this, you can turn it on and off if you don't want it. So let me go, let me turn off so I don't forget. On roller coaster. And Trevor, let's see, roller coaster trade. All right, it had a huge one today. There was your seven o'clock or eight thirty this morning that uh, took off. Went to seventy nine forty four. Went to seventy eight ninety three. Came back up to seventy nine seventy one. So it went up thirty cents. You only went thirty cents negative, and then after that. 79.42 and it stopped you out at 77.84. So not a bad, that's on four minute. Let's go to five minute. Same, about the same on five, 15 minute. Same thing on 15 minute. 78, 30 minute. Yeah, now check the 30 minute out. It hasn't even stopped out, Trevor. It's uh, still going. Down here at 7674, 7942. Two bucks. Is that right? No. Dollar sixty. Not a bad deal on it. Let's go back to ES. And let's get to Gary's deal. Der Gary said, what's the difference between a channel versus regression channel? A channel, it, a channel basically you can just drop it wherever you want it. So like say Bob Dunn, love Bob. Bob will come in here and draw his own channel. So basically he's just, Bob's just doing a trend line and he's gonna click it here to here. He's gonna move it around and get it exactly where he wants it. All right, then he's gotta, then you gotta do a, a top one, another one, let's say here to here. And then you got to do a center line. Well, I don't know. That's not straight. You know what I mean? Like they're all over the place. So let's take these off. And when you drop a channel, let's go to, let me go to one hour. I actually need to update to this channel. So let's just take it off. And I'm gonna take this old one off because we don't need it anymore. And 
what we're going to do. Now look, you could do, here is a longer term channel that's on here from a long time ago, like from this point down here, I did down here and then let me see. The last time it was snapped was right here. So I need to update this one as well. So let's remove it. We're going to go down to regression trend and I put 15 minute no channel background. That's just so that I know that that is. We'll go from there to our current. And that's where we're at. There's your long, long term. Okay. Now, if you really want to do another one, this one is not a good channel because we had too long of an up. And then now we've had chop on this one hour. Um, I don't like that. So let's go down to 15 minutes. All right, on a 15 minute, uh, let's see here. Guys, this is actually a decent channel going up. Now this has been choppy like this. So I'm gonna probably use a channel going up for a short when it breaks out of it. So let's hit this channel. Drop down. Now I'm going to do the white channel that because I have that red one that's on here. All I'm doing is going from this low of this point to where the current price is. Okay. Now this channel is a uh, is on a 15 minute. See where we drew it right here is 15 minutes. And then there's that up 15 minute uptrend that is within a one hour, 60 minute, whatever you want to call it, longer term. Now this has been going since March 20th. So we have two months worth of time. Yes, that's my dog back there. She's been at the, I've been out of town for a week and I just got her back tonight. So she's been uh, pretty jumping around. <laughs> so we can see our channel here. We'll go down to 15 minutes. Let me go backwards, see if I can, there we go. You just got to scroll back or drag it backwards. So I know this is a longer term 15, uh, one hour channel, even though we're in a 15 minute chart. So we're looking for opportunities in here. Now here's the 15 minute channel. Now let's go down to a five minute chart. All right. Now we're looking for, you can look for opportunities with roller coaster inside that 15 minute channel. And there's, I mean, there's quite a few of them in there. Let's go down to four, see if there's a better. Four minutes has been doing pretty good. One, two, three, just say one loser. Four, five, let's say there are two losers. Six, uh, three, four losers. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, eleven. You just got to be. If you take any of these smaller ones, you like for instance this one right here. You're at the center channel line, and it's going down. When you get this signal to go short, you are. You're also going to go down here and look. What does your bias say? Bias says, hell no, it's going long. It's yellow, you haven't got a red dot yet. You're not gonna take it yet. Even though stochastics crossed over over here, you could have taken it off the center channel line. You just don't have any reason to take it. That, and I, guys, I think, um, you're welcome, Trevor. I think um, I finished this weekend Trading in the Zone um, audio book. It's like, I want to say uh, eight hours, nine hours total. I finished it in my week trip. I had enough miles in the vehicle and flights between all of them. I was able to finish that entire book. And my takeaway that I really got out of that book was everybody in trading keeps, I call it hodgepodging um, their trading where you're taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and you're creating your new um, trading style. Well, there's nothing proven about it. You know what I mean? Like you, you don't have a system that was put together by somebody that knows what they're doing. 
you're just hodgepodging a little successful part of this one. And that's not saying that it doesn't work. For instance, adding the channels to trade the fifth stuff. I think it's pretty darn powerful uh, that's on there. Stick with the rules and just follow the rules. If it doesn't fit it, don't take a trade. Think about this. You have five days a week, 20 days a month, roughly. Some months you might have a couple more days. Uh, obviously, February, every non-leap year you have less. But you basically have 20 trading days a month. You only got to be, depending on what most people's goals are, most people want to make 500 bucks a day, you know, uh, 10 grand a month, 120 grand a year after taxes, 95 grand. Well, to, to do that, you only need one or two trades a week that you let go and let them run out of there to hit that, whatever number that you need to be at. You, when you're using a system that has a set of rules, fourth wave pullback needs to be outside of six four moving average. Bias needs to be green. Oscillator can't be violated. Stochastic has to be, uh, you know, either the eighty or the twenty. And I need to see the arrow. You have rules to follow when you're trying to just invent rules out of the air for yourself. Just follow the trade the fifth rules. Don't add a whole bunch of other crap into what we're doing that it ends up you end up complicating something that's very simple the rules are very simple on you know what i mean what to do with elliott wave isolate fourth wave pullback you use roller coaster to find the third wave move i don't even turn on elliott wave guys i leave elliott wave off okay when on a, I start out in the mornings on a 15 minute chart. As soon as I see one of these uh, moves like this, okay, this was the 15th. When I see one of these moves taken off, now I go on a 15 minute chart in the, in the mornings because I draw that opening range out. And then I can drop down to a five minute. Well, when I see that big green box there, I can look at this and physically see one, two, three, four, and then it never had a fifth wave move out of there. It was a failed fifth wave move. But I can see that it's there. I don't need to put Elliott Wave on my chart and have a bunch of other stuff on there. I can just have the market doing its thing with my channel, uh, seeing where I'm at in the channel and then like this one here it's like this was uh if you isolated right here 93.78 let's uh let's go over here and do hold on a second we've got too many charts When I run Zoom, it taxes the hell out of the computer. My video card always comes on with Zoom. So let's turn on. Okay. Let's go back over here. Five minutes. All right, this move right here. So I'm going to look at this looks like a one and a two. So I'm gonna take this low over here. That's candle 93.78. Go over here, click the sprocket, inputs 93.78. Lo and behold, looky there, an Elliott wave. But I didn't have to have the Elliott wave stuff on there because I could see this third wave move coming out of there and you just look. One, you know, a higher spot here, a lower spot, a long three, fourth wave pullback, and a fifth wave target. Now, this ended up turning into three, four, five, but this became a longer three, fourth wave pullback, longer fifth wave move. And then this ended up, fifth wave move became a three, fourth wave pullback for a fifth wave. Uh, and 
if you have your channel on there, look where the fifth wave move, uh, the target zone is, which it went about halfway into it. What would you do with your stop loss? Move it up to the channel line, you know, while it's still going up. And then I move, I always move mine to though, as soon as we hit the fifth wave target box and it penetrates and starts going in there, I move my stop loss right to the, the blue line. Who cares? You, you know what I mean? You won. Who cares if you pull six more ticks or seven more ticks out of it? You know, if you were over here, 29.47 and you're at 29.71. It's like, dude, you pulled 20, you pulled a hundred ticks out of there. Who cares about, it? you know, six or eight more. I'd rather take the hundred than chance six or so more. Yes, I was gonna say, Trevor. Trevor, there. The thing is, is there's opportunities all day long. So, let's say, all right, let let's go. What time is it? I don't want to keep you guys too late. Um, let's go down. Come on, there's the channel. Okay, so we've been range bound today. Like, let's take this channel, 15 minute channel out. All right, we've been kind of range bound in here today. So let me take that 60 minute channel out and let's just use bits that's out of there. Take off roller coaster, throw on bits, and there's that move where we cyan crossed over, we got a green dot. Oscillator doesn't matter because that was on something else. Oscillator went down from red to green, took off like a rocket. Got your green arrow down here on stochastics that crossed over the bottom 20. If you've gone over, you've got go. Stochastics crossed over. There's one reason to go. 535 oscillator, the, it's gone down from red to green. Second reason to go along. Cyan crossed over the yellow, third reason to go long. Bias is green, fourth reason to go long. I haven't found one reason not to go in that. Now the only thing, and that, that's on a one hour time frame right there. So let's draw a quick channel. We're gonna do another red one. So let's just say that you're only doing from here Let's see, what time is that? That is at 1700 yesterday. So you did yesterday's global open to there. All right, look how we bounce. Boom, boom, boom. And look at this right now. We came down, wicked out. If you read the price action breakdown book on channels, this is a telltale sign that big banks and institutions are pushing it back into the channel. So on a one hour time frame, there you go. This was um, close to a long signal. Now I don't like taking one hour deals. So let's go down to 15 minutes. All right. And keep in mind, we don't have roller coaster on here. We're just using bits in a channel. Look at the opportunities on here. Cyan crossed over the uh, yellow. Going short at 29.65, it went all the way down to 29.57. That sound like uh, a bunch, but that's a 15 minute candle, 45 minutes and 64.57, seven, 28 ticks in an hour. But you got your green, green went to yellow, and then you got your short signal, and it went down. As soon as you got your green bar, you're out. This looks like we're gonna come back up here and test the 6.4 moving average bottom and then go lower, which we know on that higher time frame on the hour channel that we still got on that channel a little bit farther to go to the bottom. But let's go to five minutes in that same channel. All right. Now let's take out the wait wave. So you still got your one hour channel and that's just your current, you know, from yesterday's Globex open till tonight's Globex open, 24 hour period. You're looking for opportunities. Here's one right here. Cyan crossed over the yellow. Where did it cross over at? In the middle of the channel line. We go all the way down to the bottom. Where are you gonna put your stop loss on the channel line? That's where I'm gonna put it. We chopped around, chopped around. 
we did wick out of there to go long. Cyan crossed over there. Red bias went to green for longer time frame. Shorter bars in your 535 oscillator. We crossed over a couple of candles before. Not a huge trade, 29.32, took off, went up to 29.39, 28 ticks. If you're doing a quick 10, 15 tick scalps uh, on these smaller time frames like this, they're there. This one crossed over right here at 29.33, went through the center channel line, 29.48. That's a 60 tick move right there in one, two, three, four candles. 20 minutes, 60 ticks. Nothing else on your chart. Same way with this one. Came over, cyan crossed over the yellow again right there. It came back and retested it one, two, three times. And then never, never stopped all the way up there. There's lots of moves like these. Now combine that with roller coaster. Now see how much more powerful this is using roller coaster. Roller coaster got you in down over here at 29 or excuse me, bits got you in at 29.49. Roller coaster got you in here at 29.55. Now I did pull back and I told you my rules, this is my own personal rules. I don't get in the second time in roller coaster till it, it goes out, pulls back. And usually the second time when it goes past that first little, I don't know what you want to call it, hump or level, that's when it usually takes off, which it did, that uh, came back took off like a rocket all the way up. But that's where roller coaster comes in handy on these channels is you get a lot of confirmation uh, of when to get in or out of these. Uh, when you think it's gonna run out of steam, but uh, I mean, look at my five minutes on Elliott Wave. Now I think I changed the count. Since we started this an hour ago, it's been an hour. So, is it 1900 is when we started this? Yeah. Right in here, I got out of there, but look, roller coaster took it. I got out at 2963, and this thing went all the way down to 2958. So, I gave up 20 more ticks that were out of there, but there's that channel line, and this, I'm like, I'm happy with it of where it was at. That was a $250 move. Cause I got, you know what I mean? 20 more ticks and made another, well shit, that'd been another 250. That would've been a $500 move since we've been on this deal here. And now look, now we're pulling back out again. We're above the six four moving average too. You're gonna be close to another bits entry right here when Cyan crosses over. Now look, your bias has gone from red to indecision on the higher time frames. Your uh, 535 oscillator is getting shorter, shorter, shorter. You've already got your false breakout to go long right here where you're like, man, I want to go long, I want to go long. You finally got your arrow right here on the candle before where we're at right now. And you're above your 6.4 moving average. You have a lot of reasons to go long right here. Now, me personally, since we have an Elliott, uh, possible fifth wave move eventually, but I'm not gonna take a fifth wave move. We're probably gonna get resistance right here and pull back down and retest. Yeah, cause we went out. We haven't gone back down to retest the six four. It's gonna probably come back down here and touch in here before it moves back up. Trisha, I'm glad that, you know what I mean? Like sometimes, Sometimes I think if you attend these classes every Wednesday, I may seem very repetitious. And it's not that I don't want to come up with new content. It's I want you, I want to beat it in your head so that you do the same thing. Like I want you to talk out loud and call these moves out of uh, grading them. I got yes, 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 yes. So looks like a good trade. What you know, like, um, and then look at it on a high. Having that channel, a higher time frame channel on the lower time frames, you know what the long term picture is. While you're in the small time, you know you don't have a monster account to be able to absorb and let something whip around twenty five points. You know what I mean? And which you shouldn't do that. Um, you know, you got a lot of money in your account to do something like that. 
hey, look at this move. What did I just tell you right here? I said, this thing's probably going to come back down and test this 6-4 moving average top. And look what it did. See how we went lower, lower. We stayed right on. Nothing closed above that green zone. Now we're working our way down. It's got four minutes left on this deal. But anyway, all right, guys. <laughs> Greg, that's, uh, oh, that is too funny. You have to stop cussing them. Hey, Greg, you'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to post a picture on Twitter here in just a little bit. At the Kansas City Airport, I lost count at 110 planes uh, from Delta that were parked out on the, uh, st like, stored. It was 110 of them. I've never seen that many planes in my life in one place uh, like that. All right, guys, you all have a good night, man. Thanks so much for attending tonight. Um, if you ever need anything, just send me a private message. Uh, I'd be happy to help you all. Um, uh, most of you on here know I'll do a private uh, Zoom meeting with you and go through these same things and help you through anything that I can. Uh, I spent some time with Gary the other day. It's, um, what is that at the bottom of the stochastic box? That is a, the yellow, Trevor, is a false breakout. And what that is saying is it's coming down. You start seeing other candles where you think, hey, I need to go long. I need to go long. This is telling you don't go long yet, that it's not ready to go. It hit it right here at this candle. Uh, it met the requirements to go long. That doesn't mean you automatically do it. Now, look, here we are right here. We just touched the 6-4 moving average. So let's see if we bust through it or if it pulls back. Oh, man, we got high volume. High volume on this one. Got two minutes, 27 seconds left. This pulls back up and closes above the 6.4, which it looks like it probably did me. Let's go down to a three minute, see what it's doing. Two minute. Now you're looking at roller coaster. All right. Close to cyan crossing over. Hasn't quite yet. Uh, that's on there. Three minutes. Cyan has crossed over on the three minutes. So this thing might take off. Now we do have a roller coaster signal to go long. Doesn't mean it's going to do it. But. And you're getting a longer, look at this, you're getting a longer box down here on your 535. So it may, be, may crown out again for another short. Let's go bigger than five. I think, yeah, okay. Look, I was going to say 50, 30 minutes has a roller coaster move for a short. Now, I personally don't take 30 minute roller coaster moves. I like two, three, four, and five. That's it. If I'm wrong, I can get out in 15 minutes or less and cut my losses. Um, now, if a 15 minute, like here is a 30 minute one. If you're over in here and you're thinking about getting out, we're not even close to the stop out right here. So, kind of keeps you in it in the long term. You know, you're over here on a five minute and you're like, man, I think I'm going to get out of this trade. You look at your higher time frames and be like, nah, we're not even anywhere even close to the, uh, you know, and it closed out right here when it opened it touched right here and knocked you out of it. But as with the channel, like I said, when you get to the top of the channel, I like to take them there. All right, guys. How did I know that it would retest? Uh, just experience, Trevor, uh, just watching it. Now, we blew all the way through it. So now, but look, we haven't closed below this level right here, 29.57.50. We've had some wicks below there, but almost everything has actually closed a little bit higher, 29.58.25. You only have one close there, and then it took off like a rocket. Now you got a new candle. We'll see if it comes all the way back. The cyan line came up. It didn't cross over on this five-minute chart. So that's one reason why I wouldn't take it long, because I needed to cross over. And then I prefer the next candle to close, and then the next candle open, and then it takes off. And that's good. Now this one 
okay, we've made it through the 6.4 moving average. You're probably going to come up here, test the bottom of this 6.4, and then reverse and come back farther down. Which this number four, if it goes below 29.55, it's going to move the fourth wave pullback over here. And that's a nasty looking fourth wave pullback that I would never take. Okay, guys, have a good night, man. Thanks so much. Reach out to me if you need anything. It's JW from Trade Fit. See you later.